Hi, in this video we'll be talking about how bacteria regulate their gene expression. And what you'll see is that regulation of expression can actually occur at multiple levels. There's the kind of initial level of control, which would be transcriptional control, and usually this is a regulation of the ability of RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter and initiate transcription. So that's going to be transcriptional control. And is going to be the control mechanism between the DNA and the RNA in gene expression. Now you can also have translational control, which is going to regulate the process of translation. And usually this will occur in two forms. You'll either have uh, some sort of degradation of the mRNA transcript as a form of regulation, or you can regulate the process of initiation and elongation in translation. So here we'd have translational control. Now, interesting to note, you can also regulate proteins after they've been translated. And this is usually in the form of activating or deactivating proteins. So here we have post translational control. And here's the thing, you can get some really fast response by using post translational control mechanisms, activating, deactivating those proteins, you're going to get really immediate responses in your regulation. Transcriptional control, on the other hand, it's going to take a little longer to feel the effects of that regulation, but it provides a more powerful global type of regulation. Now, it's also worth noting that it, it costs more energy generally speaking, to control at the protein level, to do that sort of post-translational regulation. That's going to cost more energy because, well, you have to control each protein that's there, and generally this is going to be in the form of activating or deactivating those proteins, which quite often means phosphorylating or dephosphorylating those proteins, but the end game is that ATP is going to be expended. So, Post-translational control is really nice because it's so fast and responsive. You know, the cell can immediately switch gears and uh, regulate those proteins, but it's energy intensive to do that. Whereas it takes less energy to control things at the transcriptional level, you know, just blocking transcription or initiating it. However, it takes longer to feel the effects of that regulation because well, either you have to wait for the proteins to be tr uh, translated after they're transcribed, or if the protein's present and you're trying to diminish its quantity by shutting off transcription of that particular protein or that gene that codes for that protein, well, it's going to take a while to feel that effect. So, the point is, there are many levels of embedded control systems in, well, all cells, bacteria in this example, and they provide flexibility and control. You can have faster control mechanisms that cost a little more energy. You can have slower mechanisms that save a little more energy. The point is that you have multiple systems of control. So in theory, if uh, the regulation failed at one level, you'd be able to kind of catch it at another. Essentially, we are entrenching levels of regulation to provide flexibility for the cell. Now, there are different types of control, and we kind of have some different terms that very generally, very broadly classify these different control mechanisms. Now, negative control refers to some type of regulatory mechanism that prevents transcription. It's kind of like turning off a gene. Now, 
There's also positive control, which is kind of like the opposite of that, where the regulatory mechanism actually stimulates transcription, or kind of like turning on a gene. Now, within negative and positive control, you have both inducible and repressible systems, and, and we'll break this all down. So, inducible systems are ones where gene expression is normally stopped. So this gene is not normally being expressed, but the expression of that gene can be induced. So we can start expressing that gene when we need it. Repressible systems, again, are kind of like the opposite of this. And in a repressible system, a gene is normally being expressed, right? Transcription is normally happening of that gene, but when we need to, we can turn it off. We can stop transcription. We can repress that gene. So thinking about this in terms of a negative control system, our inducible negative control system would be one in which uh, we normally, normally don't express this gene, it can be induced, and the regulatory mechanism that is preventing that gene from being expressed is a negative one. Uh, this is usually in the form of something called a, oops, a repressor. So we have a repressor that is attached to our promoter region of our gene. It's preventing transcription and then when we want to turn on the gene or perhaps I should say when we want to transcribe that gene when we want to express it we can induce expression so normally we have this repressor bound but when we want to express that gene we can induce expression now the opposite of that would be a negative repressible system where the gene expression is normally happening but when we want to we can add that repressor in and turn off the gene or perhaps I should say um, stop expression of that particular gene. So that's an example of how you could have both an inducible and a repressible system in a negative control system. And just to be thorough, let's run through that with a positive control system too. So again, positive control means a regulatory mechanism that stimulates transcription. And this is usually in the form of an activator, some sort of uh, protein that's going to activate transcription. So in an inducible positive control system, we will normally not have gene expression but when we want gene expression, well, then we can induce it by adding in that activator. So for a positive repressible system, that would be where we normally have gene expression, meaning that activator is normally attached, causing gene expression. But when we want to shut it off, then we can by releasing that activator. So positive control, negative control, inducible, repressible. You can mix and match the flavors there uh, as we've laid out. And looking at this picture here, you could call this, this could be your activator or repressor. Here is your polymerase. And here is your, scroll down a little bit here, here is your promoter, and here the region that the repressor activator binds to is called the operator, and we will talk about that more on the next page. So this is just meant to be a very generic diagram. We'll get into specifics when we turn the page. So let's flip the page.